men. I guess that's it. Put him in the stretcher and take him to the morgue. Must I stay, Inspector? For a while, Miss Bunting. I'll need all the details for my report. That such a thing could happen here, here in my own house. Go on, Miss Bunting. You said you were looking for a lodger? Yes, Inspector, we had to. But I never dreamed that such a thing could happen here, to us. Why, it was only last Tuesday night my husband and I were sitting before our fire while we read the newspaper about the latest murder, the fifth, by the Avenger. I remember saying distinctly, Robert, this Avenger person could be the fellow standing next to you. Or maybe the man you bump into. It's a terrible thought. Oh, yes. But it appears to me that the Avenger's too quick for the police. And, and look here. It says this girl he got last night was like all the others. Pretty, blonde. She'd just come from the music hall exactly like all the rest of his victims. What a pity. Ellen, have you stopped to think who fits that description perfectly? Our own Daisy. Shh. What a thought, Bunting. It's a good thing that she's with her aunt instead of here in London. <sighs> Ain't a safe place for a girl now. Oh, just the same. I can't help thinking how fine it'd be to have her here with me. Well, there's no sense in even talking about it. We just can't afford it. Oh, I know that, Ellen, but I've hoped we could manage it someday. How? Haven't I scrimped myself half crazy trying to keep us going? Oh, no, Ellen. Well... Well, don't you go worrying about it. I, I think we can, um... Now, who do you suppose that could be? Well, could it be someone looking for a room? <laughs> oh, I wish it were. Then you could have your daisy back. Good evening, sir. I saw your sign. It says you have a room to rent. Yes, sir, please. Well, won't you come in? Thank you. Could I take your cape, sir? No. I am looking for a quiet room, but it should be very quiet. Oh, we have that, sir. Just that. Above all, our house is quiet. Your bag, sir. May I take it? No. Just show me the room, please. Oh, yes. Yes, sir. It's right up these stairs, sir. This way. You see, sir, there's just my husband and me here, and we're ever so quiet. I'm sure you'll find this room to your liking. Here we are. I think I like this room. Is it pleasant? Isn't it, sir? There's not many rooms with such pretty pictures now, is there? I don't know. Pretty pictures interest me very little. What I like about the room is the simplicity. I like the bareness. I think I'll take it. What is your name? Mrs. Bunting, sir. All right, Mrs. Bunting. I'll take the room. Yes, sir. And, and please, sir, let, please let me help you with your luggage. No! Don't you touch it! But, but I only wish to... Oh, you only wish to help, of course. I... I understand, Mrs. Uh, Bunting. It's, forgive me, it's just that I, I'm so very weary. I'm tired. I do a lot of studying. Of course, sir, uh, of course. You can see how few things I need. Just what's in this bag. But this is my favorite book, the Bible. It's a good book. Mrs. Bunting, isn't it? Indeed, it is, sir. Yes. It says, He brings them to their desired haven. Beautiful words, huh? And now, at last, I've found my haven of rest. If I pay you 30 shillings a week for this room, is that satisfactory? 30? Why, yes, sir, yes. That will be quite all right. My name is Sleuth. Mr. Sleuth? Yes, Sleuth. S-L-E-U-T-H. Think of a hound, Mrs. Bunting, 
and you'll never forget my name. And here are your 30 shillings. Thank you, sir. And would you be wishing anything now? Uh, supper? Tea? No, nothing. Good night, Mrs. Bunting. Yes, good night, sir. Please, stop that, you hear? Uh, oh, sir? What did I do? You were humming. That's music. But, but I... Music is an instrument of sin. Yes, sir. <laughs> and you did tell me, Mrs. Bunting, that your house would be absolutely quiet. But it is, sir. I, I didn't mean any harm. Believe me, sir. I believe you. I, I'm sorry I spoke sharply. I know you are trying to be considerate and kind. Oh, thank you, sir. Oh, by the way, Mrs. Bunting, I think I would like some bread and some tea. Certainly, sir. I'll have it in an instant. So he took the room then, Ellen, huh? He took the room and at 30 shillings a week. In advance. Now hurry now, Bunting. Is the water for the hot tea ready yet? Oh, yes, what a stroke of butter. Put the bread and butter on the tray. I'll pour the water. Uh, you know, Ellen, it's wonderful. Do you know what this means? We can have Daisy back with us now. I know, I know. Hurry with it now. Uh, wh why, we could have us back with her. We could have her back with us tomorrow. Now, there's the water, the tea, the... It's all ready. Open the door, Bunting. I'll take it up to him right away. There you go, old girl. First thing in the morning, I'm going to fetch Daisy and bring her home. Oh, it's a wonderful night, Ellen. Wonderful! Oh, oh. oh I, I mustn't. Mustn't help. She has cast down many wounded from her. Yea, many strong men have been slain by her. Come in. And to know the wickedness of folly. Why, Mr. Sleuth, you... Yes? Those what is it? Those pictures, those pretty girls, you've turned all their faces to the wall. Yes, I've turned them to the wall because they're wicked and sinful. Uh, but, sir, I... Don't you agree, Mrs. Bunting, that everything wicked and sinful should be purged from the earth? Hmm? Uh, yeah, yes, I, I, I do. I'm happy to hear that, Mrs. Bunting. Now, if you'll excuse me, I have to leave. But, sir, here's your tray. Good night, Mrs. Bunting. You know, for a moment I was stiff with fear. I set the tray down. He hadn't so much as noticed the light supper I prepared for him, and rushed to the window to watch. And then? He came out of our cottage and moved down the street, his black cape swirling about him. Finally he was lost in the fog, and I don't know why, but I stared after him for a long while. Well, I did the dishes and got ready for bed. I lay there thinking... And it was almost dawn before I had convinced myself that at most he was a trifle odd. And after all, paying 30 shillings, maybe he had a right to his strange ways. It was daylight when I suddenly awakened by the newsboy's shouts in the streets. Slowly, I realized what the newsboys were shouting. Horrible murder! Murder! King's Cross last night! victim! Read all about it! And now, Mrs. Bunting, what did you do the morning you learned the Avenger had murdered his sixth victim? Well, I was a little frightened to meet our lodger, yet I kept my thoughts to myself. After all, there still wasn't much to go on. Robert had gone to meet Daisy, so Mr. Sleuth ate breakfast alone. I watched him through the crack in the door. Finally, I went in with more tea. No. 
No, thank you, Mrs. Bunting. I don't care for any more tea. Thank you. You've been very kind. I must go on with my work now, if you'll excuse me. My fear really changed to pity then. He seemed so helpless and tired, and he was so considerate. This man couldn't be a murderer. It was all a coincidence. Besides, we just couldn't afford to lose that 30 shillings a week. Around 10 in the morning, he left the cottage, and I decided to go upstairs and have a look in his room. I had to find out what he carried in his one piece of luggage. It wasn't a bag. It was more like a case. Yes. A case. A case for a knife. I rushed up the stairs, my heart beating wildly at the thought I had had of the case. There wasn't anything in his closet. I went over to the chest of drawers against the wall. There was only one place for a small, narrow case, the bottom drawer, but it was locked. I pulled and I pulled at it, and then suddenly I heard the front door open downstairs. In a panic, I rushed out of the room and down the hall. Oh, oh, you're upstairs, Ellen. Look, look, Ellen Daisy's here. Oh, thank heaven. Oh, Mother, it's so good to see you. It's so good to be home. Why, whatever is the matter? Oh, yes, you're quite white, Ellen. Oh, it's, it's, uh, I'm all right. It's just that I wasn't expecting you so soon. Oh, well, it's good to be back. The country's all right, but there's nothing like London now, is there? No, no, there isn't. Well, as long as that Avenger's about, you're going to have to do something to keep this young lady indoors. London or no London. Oh, don't worry. Mother will see to that. Well, Daisy, I might as well get you settled. You see, Father, what I tell you, she'll have a dust cloth in my hand before I have my coat off. <laughs> <laughs> Mr. Sleuth. Why is my door open? Uh, we, uh, we was just leaving, sir. Have you been in my room? Oh, uh, not at all, sir. From now on, Mrs. Bunting, I shall keep my room locked. But you see, sir, I, I was just tidying up a bit, and Mr. Bunting, he brought our daughter home, and she just arrived, and... and this is Daisy. Pleased to meet you, sir. She's been away for quite a while, and that's why, why we're a bit excited, you might say. Uh, you were probably surprised to hear us laughing and uh, carrying on. Yes. Yes, I must say I was, but then there are different kinds of joy, are there not, Daisy? Uh, yes, I'm sure there are. Yes, there is the despicable, evil joy of the abandoned, and there is the divine happiness of the blessed. A great difference. You understand that, Daisy, don't you? What? Oh, uh, yeah, yes, sir. Yes, uh, Mr. Sleuth. There are so few young women nowadays who do. Why, Mr. Sleuth, you mean a girl's not to enjoy life at all? Not to have any fun? Enjoyment and fun, my child, are the devil's breeding ground. All his implements are there. Pleasure, impropriety, the temptation of music, dancing. <laughs> Why, there's nothing I like better than dancing, and I'm not... You like to dance? She didn't know what she was saying, Mr. Sleuth. Just just a child. Daisy, you know you've never been one for dancing. Mm -hmm. You never learned how to. But I did learn, Mother, while I was away. What's so wrong about it? What's the harm in dancing? And she lies in wait as for a prey and increases the transgressors among men. Oh, I don't know what you mean. I've never heard such nonsense. Nonsense? You call the scripture nonsense? Daisy, Daisy, go into the front room. It's all right, Mrs. Bunting. It's all right. I'm used to such kind of talk. 
good day. Daisy, Daisy, listen to me. Yes, Mother? I've got to tell you about, about. About what? Nothing. I've got to go out for a while. I'll be back. For a moment, I was about to tell my awful suspicions, but I stopped. They were only suspicions. At the same time, I had a thought. I'd go to the coroner's inquest they were having into the Avenger's latest victim. I was hoping to hear something said that would clear my suspicions of the lodger. At least I'd give him this last chance. A lady was testifying as I took my seat. She had seen the Avenger from her window, she said, and her description of him didn't tally with Mr. Sleuth. I can't tell you how possibly relieved I was till it was pointed out that she couldn't possibly have seen anyone that night from her window because of the fog. The next witness was Mr. Connaught. I leaned forward anxiously as they swore him in and began asking questions. You say, Mr. Connaught, you're positive you saw this man. Mm, Positive, Mm. yes. It was only a few moments before the murder that I saw the Avenger. Describe him. He wore a black cape, I believe, and was very gaunt looking, and was carrying a small handbag. A handbag? Yes, a small, narrow handbag, such as one might contain a knife. A knife? Silence in the court! He had a low, hesitating voice, I'd, I'd say with something of a continental accent, an educated man, I judge, but quite mad. What do you mean by that? Well, as he emerged from the fog, he was talking aloud to himself. Believe me, sir, he was reciting scriptures from the Bible! No, it can't be! It can't be! I got out of the courtroom as quick as I could. I didn't even notice it had started to rain. I hardly remember going home, running and walking somehow. Well, slowly the nightmare of fear and terror grew bigger and bigger inside me. It was three streets from our cottage that I saw Mr. Bunting. One thought hit me clearly. I realized Daisy must be home alone with the Avenger. Bunting! Bunting! What? Ellen! Ellen, what is it? Bunting, where is Daisy? Where is she? I say, where is Daisy? Why, she's at home. Listen, Bunting, listen. Sleuth is the Avenger. What? Our lodger. What are you saying? Our lodger, he's the Avenger. Daisy's alone with him right now. Hurry! Listen to me carefully, my child. Rejoice with me in your heart, for the moment is at hand. You're not afraid, Daisy, are you? No, I'm not afraid. You're very beautiful, and you should live in the ways of righteousness. You hear me, Daisy? You want to live in the ways of righteousness, don't you? Yes. Yes, I do. I know you do, and that is why I've been sent to purge your soul, so that you will be elevated beyond all sin and evil. You like to dance, Daisy, don't you? Six have gone on before you, and they are beyond all sin and evil. You are the seventh to be elevated, my child, and my work is almost done. For the seventh I have promised at this appointed hour. Be still, Daisy, and don't listen to the temptations of the crowd when they call out your name, because I am here to save you from all evil and wickedness that consume you like a wild fire of scarlet and crimson. You like to dance, don't you? Yes, I do. Look at me, Daisy? child. Are you and in don't there? Don't fear me. She's in there. And do not tremble. I know she's in there. Woe to them that call Daisy, evil good. Open the door. And open good it. Evil open it, I say. And put darkness for Look light out, and light for I'll darkness. Break it in. And therefore I must bring you down hurry, like hurry, the lamb to slaughter. And I lift my hand. Give me that ball. 
with a Daisy, flaming Daisy, sword. Daisy, she's in there, hope bunting. For now comes the vengeance <laughs> and the time to rejoice. Oh, hurry, bunting. Stop him, stop him. He'll kill her, Daisy, come here. Drop that knife, you fiend. To rob it. Uh, oh, mother. Oh, 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 you're safe. Oh, you're oh, safe. Drop, stop. Noise. Take away your hands. Let go of me. Get away. Get oh. Oh. Don't you know that such are for death to death? And that such are for the sword to the sword? And no one dares to have pity upon them. Watch <laughs> out, Daisy. His knife. His knife. Oh. <gasps> Percy, he fell on his knife. Yes. It is burning in me like a fire. Oh, it purges me and consumes me. Oh, all sin and evil are falling away. Praise and glory, for it is I who am the seventh. Yes, the vengeance is fulfilled. <laughs> <laughs>